Ashish Mystery is an entrepreneur and managing partner of BLH, BLH Venture Partners, LLC. He's an entrepreneur. Um, uh, BLH Ventures is a private investment firm, a graduate of Emory University. We obtained your BA in religion. Fascinating. Ashish holds many leadership roles uh, with high growth companies in technology enabled services, information security, and e commerce consumer markets. He's also the president and CEO of an e commerce company. Uh, and a member of the board of directors for Hypopotamus, right? I am. Uh, and serves as a member of board of directors for Venture Atlanta and the Atlanta CEO Council, and was named to the, on the to the 40 under 40 list of the Atlanta Business Chronicle. So, Sheesh, thank you for coming in. Welcome to the hot seat. Thanks for letting me pay you to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for signing the check. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get, let's get at it. So we just heard uh, a guy who's been through the entrepreneurial uh, startup world um, in over you know 17 years. Mm -hmm. You've been part of a number of different technology companies, serve on a number of boards, um, and been very active uh, in the Atlanta uh, business community as well as helping out in Midtown as well. So I'm curious, um, what have you observed when it comes to the companies you're funding, the companies that you're running? What are their needs now as compared to when you first started in, in this whole startup world? What was the question? <laughs> so, so What's your Twitter handle? <laughs> it's uh, at Stephen Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> Academic VC. <laughs> so, so I think the, um, so I've been doing this since 99. And so the, the differences between 99, and James actually did a great job in kind of covering a lot of ground, so I'm, I'm going to try not to be redundant. But <clears throat> I think the things that I think that we've got to be mindful of now and that we've got to be really kind of um, cognizant of is that it doesn't take a lot more space to do what we did back then um, as it relates to team and staff and, and you know, uh, any of those other elements, right? I mean, the costs have come way down, the, the, the time has come um, so that we can do what we need to with very little in a short period um, with, with lots less cash. Mm -hmm. And so all those elements taken into consideration, um, you know, what scares me in most is when any of my companies get capital and the first thing they do is issue a press release on their next new office, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, the death nail, right? I mean, we can think about, you know, back in the day, getting a new office as a result of getting funding was was a milestone. Mm. Today, it's kind of like a, a an anchor. And so, you know, a lot of what James says it, or said as it relates to modularity and flexibility are are key elements we look for. And, and from a team standpoint, or some of the things that we like to hear. As, a, as an investor in the in the early presentations when it deals with, hey, what do you plan to do with the money? If real estate shows up on the actual bullet point, we kind of look at it and say, well, unless you're hiring a lot of engineers that need uh, physical proximity to each other, just we're, we're kind of afraid of that, right? So, so that's the, the real estate answer. Sorry for any of the brokers in the audience. Well, I mean, let, let's let's talk practicality for those who do have real estate. Um, and, ha and have these these old structures. I mean, they're almost an edifice to the um, the siloed hierarchical world that was 20 years ago was yeah. was standard course of action. Now you have this technological shift that has happened, uh, and a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection and a cell phone is all you really need. And there's, I mean, even I mean, I know 37 Signals, the company out of Chicago, has been very big around distributed. Mm -hmm. They've got a new book around, you know, uh, you know, uh, people who are working uh, remotely. I think the book is remote. Um, this idea that you don't have to have all 40 people, if you have 40 people in a company, in the same physical space, eight to five all the time. There's different ways to communicate. There's you know, hard to get away from the office, um, easy to stay in touch with people. Uh, what, what's the practical advice that you could give people who have that real estate holding? Um, and what can they do to use their existing hardware, maybe change it up with maybe a software approach, if they use that in metaphor? Yeah, so I think um, the, the word I would use is sublet. Right, you know, sublet your space. If you've got a bunch of space and you can get other people in it, great. Um, just like you, you, you've talked about the old model of kind of having real estate assets or, or even just having a big lease. I mean, just look at the nature of the space that we're in right now. It's a big, wide open space with a bunch of tables and chairs and internet connectivity, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's more companies in here 
today than there probably would have been, at least in the last three generations of companies I've seen in this space. Yeah. Right? That's a good point. And so, so that kind of defines what's happening with the space. And, and as it relates to kind of uh, the, the internet connectivity and, and really kind of, you know, how work is happening, um, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, right? I mean, everybody, all, that's all you need is an internet connection and a laptop. And so for some of our companies, I mean, we didn't, we didn't get to the space equation until it really mattered. Um, from a productivity standpoint, right? So Control Freak is the, the, the e-commerce company that I'm the CEO of. I mean, we were in, you know, we didn't have an office until it made sense for four people to get together and have a brainstorming discussion about something or the customer support person could yell at the marketing person for not doing something. And so until that interactivity actually um, was a necessity, um, we avoided it. And, and and not because we didn't want to have space, it's just because we could get the, the work that we needed to get done um, without, the, without the additional overhead, mm -hmm. right? So. And, and I think it's interesting, uh, I know you mentioned that you signed my check, uh, I appreciate that, uh, but I, I found uh, as I came in, uh, having served um, I, on the launch team for Startup America Partnership uh, for two, two years ago when we, we launched, uh, and having uh, surveyed all the entrepreneurial emerging technology hubs that are out there, uh, this idea of collaborative collaborative space, co-working space, yep. media companies that are out there talking about these innovation uh, things seemed like there were some there were some the holes that were needing to be filled. So I'm curious as you as you've been a player uh, on, on in the operational teams as the board, but now as kind of a, a community leader, uh, what what are the important gaps that we need to fill uh, in order for us to really see this shift happen even better? Yeah. So I think. Um James alluded to it and, and probably will do a better job of explaining it, but I think these collaborative environments, I mean, Hypopotamus obviously is one of them, that's my plug, but, you know, the fact is, is that we've got, um, we've got concentrations of people working on, on like projects, whether they're not directly competitive, but they can leverage off of one another, and the fact is, is that by four teams of people not knowing they're going to internet retailer and within an hour basically booking flights, it's that sort of connectivity to one another as well as kind of for the Atlanta community that you know called solidarity whatever you want to call it but it's that sort of cohesion that will create opportunities for us as a community so so coming back to to, to your question right um, I actually forgot your question Scott uh, what's so, your Twitter handle the sheesh mystery <laughs> <laughs> so but but in all, all reality right I mean the the key thing is you've got these pockets of people working on things and if you can create an environment that actually um, that that makes it productive for them to be around each other whether they're working on a project together or not the 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 stuff within earshot ends up becoming a lot more productive to them than they would ever realize and so when we talk about space and we're talking about real estate or whatever I mean the key thing here is is that real estate is great. It's a necessity for a company at a certain stage. Day one, it's not as important to go out and sign a lease. It's important to be in a place where other people are doing work that may be of, of, of similarity in some way, shape, or form to that that you're doing. Working in your own office at home in your basement, it is it is scary sometimes, right? It might be a great opportunity for you to get away because you can lock the door. but you're not getting that sort of feedback, you're not getting that sort of socialization that's really important. I've worked with a lot of people in, in different companies that are, it's a one man band. Well, those people are the hardest working people I've ever met. You know why? Because they tell me that, <laughs> okay? And they're always busy, they're always working hard, but guess what? They're always just one person in that company. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to get out of your house, the ability to show up somewhere, the ability to hear from people that are working on similar or, or tangentially related products, they might be able to give you support and help or might be able to show up and be your internet retailer partner or South by Southwest cohort. That's, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, you've, your company, Control Freak, uh, has just graduated from the ATDC program, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you, prior to that, were guys were working in different areas, and, and so you went from a couple guys and gals in different locations in the mm -hmm. city working uh, in a distributed fashion, now clustered in the ATDC. Um, how is that model helping you guys? How, how, how important is, is a model like ATDC in, in this community? 
so it's been great. So first and foremost, I can't say, you know, sing the praises of ATDC enough, not because Steven's sitting right there looking at me. Yep. But but also but but also because there's there's the intangible elements of having something that's been, you know, the oldest, the first, probably the best in the country to be able to kind of attach, you know, your name to. Um, so it, it lends a lot of credibility, but also what it does is it helps you recruit people, mm -hmm. right? So it helps you recruit team. And, and then what it also does is it gives you a sense of community, um, you know, out the gate. So hey, for those who are trying to figure out ATDC, it's the it's an it's, incubator, right? It's a yeah, so it's, technology it's incubator. the country's oldest technology incubator. Um, ATDC helps companies and entrepreneurs in Georgia um, build, succeed, and grow. Mm -hmm. and, and to graduate means a combination of things, right? Either size of, uh, of company, uh, employee base, size of revenues, or, or funding. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And, and so you've seen that that's been a, a very a fertile kind of a hot house over there where you've got people that have already had gone through the Flashpoint Accelerator or gone through some customer discovery, got traction, and then come through ADD, ATDC and then get to a point where they grow too big for that subsidized, because it is subsidized by, by the, the Georgia Tech and the state and, and the, the, the folks there, the taxpayers, right? Um, what happens now? Where, where do you go? Where do you land? So that's, that's part of it. So um, the, the best thing and worst thing about the ATDC, as those of us as insiders may know, is that every space you might potentially move to after that point is going to be worse. <laughs> You, can, you can't get space in town. You can't get Class A real estate in town for the price that you're paying for um, as a result of, of what the ATDC brings to the table. And so, you know, your options are limited in terms of finding something of equal or, or better quality. Mm -hmm. And so um, you have to be creative. And so, so you, you know, you, you find places like Hype or you find places that you might be able to share with somebody else. And so... Um, so you, you've, you've just got to work it, right? So uh, what is your short, brief, concise answer to the future? What is the future of work? It's a great question, Scott. Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. It's a horrible answer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so my con concise answer, so I'm restating the question so I have time to think about uh, What the is the future of work? Is okay, got it. <laughs> I could have gone with what's your Twitter handle, but you already answered that one. So. I think it, it's it's collaboration. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. Judges? Yeah, judges take it. Thank you, Shoes Mystery. Thanks. You're out of the hot seat. <laughs> you put that in there.